What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we've got a pretty interesting video for you. Today I decided to see what are some of the cheapest pistols you could possibly get. I just literally wanted to see how the cheapest possible handguns on the market operated. So I found the three guns under $100 that I thought would be even remotely worth a crap. Uh, one of these you've already seen. This is the High Point CF380. It's the 380 ACP version of the High Point C9, which is very popular. And we've already done a first shot to this. That's gonna cost me $80. And it is the cheapest semi-automatic pistol with the appropriate caliber for self-defense, which is 380. That's probably the lowest I would go. I prefer nine, but I do carry 380 every once in a while. So I wanted to put this on the channel. And if you're interested, uh, we do have a first shot to this you can check out. We will be shooting this a little bit today as well. This is a blowback operated four inch barreled pistol, I believe, maybe a three inch barrel, three inch barrel, 380 pistol, pretty terrible trigger, a blowback action. And uh, because it's a blowback action, it's very cheap. It has a very heavy slide, making the size to weight ratio not ideal on the seven round 380. Uh, it's about the size of a Glock 19 and you get about the same capacity and barrel length as you would a Ruger Max. So that gives you an idea, but it in fact is $80 and that is very, very cheap. And honestly, this is better than nothing. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. So we did that and then I was like, what else can you get under $100? So I wanted to get one really good gun and kind of one, hopefully it's okay. And the first one, the one I think is gonna be good is gonna be this Heritage Barkeep. And the reason why I say that is I've had a Heritage revolver before. This is the cheapest revolver I could find. And this is a 22 long rifle, although I do believe they do make this in 22 Magnum, I think. I hope they do. And if it were a concealed carry pistol, this would work. Now this would work for a lot of different purposes aside from concealed carry or self-defense. But again, discount the 22 revolver. I get that, it's not ideal. However, it is still better than nothing. It does make noise and it does in fact shoot a bullet. And 22 long rifle, despite popular opinion, is lethal, especially when you put it in the right spot. So if this gun here, I think this is probably gonna be the most shootable, most reliable pistol that we have on the uh, table. However, it is a very low capacity, six rounds of 22 uh, long rifle, but six rounds uh, where you want them going off at the right time is probably gonna be better than what we're gonna get out of these other two pistols. I have no experience with this. I have no idea how to use this damn thing, literally at all. I have not taken this apart. You can see, cause it's got a little cylinder safety ring in there. We just took it out of the box and we're gonna do a couple of first shots with this guy today. And then we're really gonna go into the weeds and we're gonna shoot a gun that I'm actually a little concerned about. <laughs> this was $60. This is a gun. And this was the cheapest pistol on the internet. This was $60 new, and I don't have any freaking clue how to use this. <laughs> We're gonna find out together. So basically what I've, I've figured out so far is this is a breech action uh, nine millimeter pistol or a, a, a break open nine millimeter pistol. The trigger also looks like it is the operation to open the gun, and then we stick it back on here, lock it up, and then I think we use the trigger to pull it all the way back, and I think we release it with force. The reason why I say that is because I can see the firing pin in here. And when you release the trigger with force, the firing pin hits the uh, primer of the round and theoretically goes off and doesn't blow me up. <laughs> the sights are, the word rudimentary doesn't really cover it. They are nubs. We have appears to be a Mossberg style cross bolt safety. And I don't know what this is, a finger groove? <laughs> A trigger guard. I don't know what the hell this is, but when I was holding this up and trying to dry fire with this, I have not, I have not picked up a gun that I feel like is harder to shoot than this since the pen gun. And we got a hit. I think this is probably going to be worse, just because this is nine millimeter as opposed to the 22 long rifle, and uh, the recoil on this, I bet, is going to be entertaining because it weighs like three ounces. It's very, very, very light, and uh, obviously no uh, semi-automatic action of any type to help or recoil spring or hammer spring or there's literally nothing to help you. Uh, this is just going to be. I don't know, a little mini cannon, I guess, is kind of the explanation because it's kind of how a cannon works, you know. It's just a, a classic breech loading firearm technology of the 1700s put in the cheapest polymer frame you can imagine. And uh, it, uh, it arrived here for your viewing pleasure. 
So yeah, this should be fun. I'm excited. If you like the video, you like the content, just make sure to subscribe to Patreon. That's the best way to help the channel. We did purchase all these guns with the Patreon dollars. The link is in the description below. If you're not interested in Patreon, you can hit us with the super thanks on YouTube. Works the same way. Helps us out either way. We appreciate it. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter named Iowa. Those kids could really use your help, so please go down there and donate to those kids. Let's go down there and uh, make a fool out of ourselves. You are one fine fella. Just got a bunch of scratches on my glasses right where I look, so hopefully that won't, I doubt that's gonna affect my accuracy as much as the high point. <laughs> so now we're gonna try the high point 380 at 75 yards, and uh, just because I'm optimistic. Oh, I gotta do the thing to get my thumb out of the way, because last yep. time I bit the shit out of my thumb. Yep. I'm going off to the left. We had no hits at 75, but no uh, with the factory mag without the extension, we have yet to have a malfunction since the first shots. Now, we'll go from, uh, I think this is gonna be my favorite, this little heritage revolver here. I grew up shooting 22 revolvers. It's one of the first things I ever shot along with uh, 22 lever actions in my dad's 1911. The problem with my dad's 1911 is, you know, a government issue 45 ACP is kind of difficult for like an eight year old to shoot. So I generally shot uh, my grandpa's old 22 revolver, which he actually used to shoot rabbits off of his uh, tractor. So if you're wondering how I learned how to shoot, it's because I kind of come from a, a history of most of my family just shoots. You know, we lived out in the country, we've had farms, and that's just the way of life for us. This has a bent front sight. <laughs> Holy shit. Like really bent. Uh oh. What well, was $100? Yeah. Oh, that didn't take long. Maybe that hammer block. Maybe that's what it is. It is mm -hmm. what it is. All right, so this thing has like a weird little hammer block right here. So you have to have that thing flip down like a safety or the gun doesn't work. Hmm. Now in the old west, that's what I was telling you about uh, previously, they usually just loaded. I got a hit. Yeah, you I did. I told you I was gonna shoot this one the best. I, I got a, so in the old west, they would usually only load five chambers or at least so the story goes because they had a lot of. Uh, Endies. Yeah, hammer fall. Okay. Well, I like this little hit. gun. This is a nice little gun. Now, it doesn't have any push rod to get the rounds out, so I think what it wants you to do is like the old school revolvers, just kind of your takedown levers or push rod, I assume. And what I'm gonna have to do is take the cylinder out. I think, this is just me guessing. All right, now tell me if I'm wrong here, viewers, but I think this is what it wants you to do. And while that is much slower in the loading operation and the, uh, the overall capacity of the gun compared to, let's say, the high point, I gotta tell you, I would trust the reliability of this motherfucker any day of the week over the high point. Bent front sight's interesting. I have to pattern this because I feel like these are good shots. Oh, we got we got a timing issue. Well, I was wrong about it being more reliable. We have a a broken gun. Uh oh. That was fast. Okay. Well. Well, I was wrong about it being the most reliable, but I got to tell you, you know that old saying, "Get what you pay for." It's true in most things, sadly. But I am learning how to use it a little bit. Nice. Jesus, you fucker. Try this again. I feel like when we did the first shots of that high point that well, we were just shooting, everyone was like, well, duh, it's a high point. It was only 180 bucks or whatever. Right. And they, you know, discounted it. But sadly, these guns exist for a reason because people still buy them sure. and well because they're better goal, than nothing because yeah like, 
if you buy a, a 22 revolver for the farm and the first shot doesn't go off, it's not the end of the world because you're probably just shooting at a fucking rabbit anyway. So it yeah. really depends on what you're buying it for. What I gotta do is be more deliberate about the hammer cone to the rear and not kind of half ass it, it looks like. And I'm kind of half aiming, kind of not. Right now I'm just getting used to the gun and trying to get used to the operation. Right. So I think we'll probably just shoot what everybody's been waiting for, because I've kind of been waiting for it myself. So we're gonna try this fucker out. It had a lot of warnings about hang fire. So if it doesn't go off, remind me I have to wait like 30 seconds. Oh, what is a hang fire? Pull the trigger, nothing happens. And then eventually And then eventually it, it just pops off and that's terrible. You don't want to have the chamber half open or anything when you do because, you know, that's what bad things happen. All right, see, this makes me a little nervous because what you're doing is you're sliding around onto this little shelf here with kind of an exposed primer there. Yikes. And then you kind of have to sheath the bullet that's touching the firing pin and the primer at the same time, which is a little scary. So, all right, we'll try this out, and I think we pull the trigger back. <laughs> what a shit show that is! <laughs> a, that's horrific, and B, like, cause he, I have no grip. There's like no way to aim, nothing. And then when you pull the trigger to the rear, nothing happens until you like, you like let the trigger go. But you have to let the trigger go fast, so it's like a, uh, it's like a practice, like a maybe hold it down here, fall off it kind of thing. What in the hell is this? What have I done to myself? This is the worst gun I've ever shot. That includes the pin. I'm going to go low underneath and then try to... Well, it was a little better the second time. So you have to go real low. That must be what this is for. Hold on. Okay. Here, let me unload it quick. So it's a single shot, yeah? Yeah. So what you do up under here, it feels like this. This is what this is meant for. You kind of go like this. And that's your grip, essentially, like that. And then what you do, wrap around here like this, thumb out of the way, finger down all the way, and release. So it's real weird, it's kind of like that. It's not natural. Natural is not what I would call this. But you're a natural at it. Natural getting that booty. All right, handsome. All right, compared to the Altor, the high point actually feels really good now. It's Everything in life is a comparison. So now we're gonna try them at 50 yards instead of 75. I'm actually gonna try to hit some stuff now. Hopefully we will hit a couple things. Nothing but air at 50 as well. <laughs> Good times. But reliable. Reliable, yeah. What'd you find out? Uh, well, I went and looked at the box there, and it looks like the Heritage actually comes with a push rod, which is pretty sweet. So you don't have to take it apart like I said you do. I'm not overly good at this either, if you can't tell. I don't know what the appropriate old-timey push rod technique is. All right, now I wanted to test this guy at 50, even with its bent front sight, and as you can see, it's extremely bent off to the right there. But if I center it, I still might be able to get some hits. All right, that one felt a little weird. I don't think that was a gun's fault. So yeah, this one for sure is the most accurate and that doesn't surprise me. Revolvers are very inherently accurate due to the fixed barrel and the single action trigger. So even a $100 revolver is very accurate. I would be concerned with the overall durability and uh, overall like build quality of this, but the accuracy is good at least. Hit something, baby, come on. Nope. Jesus, this thing has some recoil. 
It looks like it, honestly. It does. It's no joke, because it's it weighs nothing. It's a couple of ounces. It's a full nine millimeter with no recoil spring. And it's really the ergonomics. Like if you could get up on it like this, uh -huh. and you could control it, like get a high, high, uh, high grip on it, but you can't, because now your trigger finger, there's nowhere to go. So you have to go all the way down here, like I was saying, and this just wants to fly go. out of your hand yeah. every single time. All right, now we'll do some up close stuff, some 10 yard stuff. Uh, I was just trying the other stuff just for fun. I think this is where the high point is really going to shine. I mean, the high point is for sure a usable self-defense weapon as long as you don't get malfunctions. And so far, you know, that's the issue with the high point, is the high point is the magazines. Uh, we've done the high point C9000 interview, the high point carbine, and then this, and all three were very finicky about the magazines, which is funny because all the fucking magazines are made by high point. <laughs> It so, is it is strange. Right, but you get good mags and you get bad mags. Now the downsides of the Heritage, in my opinion, are going to be obviously caliber because it's a 22 loading time. But I would argue that again, even over the high point, for like ranch purposes and stuff like that, I, I think this is a better gun. And uh, the high point is probably the one, if I had to go under $100, something I was going to conceal carry, probably that high point. But if I was going to use something as like a ranch gun, it would be this. And if I was gonna try to, like, I don't know, set up my friends as like a prank or something, I would buy the Altor. <laughs> like if, I think I'm gonna keep the Altor just so when Nick shows up, I can get him to shoot it. All right, let's try this fast, which is gonna be hard to do with a single action. Mm-hmm. But still, doable, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, if this was an appropriate caliber 22 Magnum, would that be usable? I think so. So the question is, I suppose, how do they dual wield? How many of you practice left hand single action? So while we were uh, dual wielding, we had a limp wrist malfunction, which is not a surprise. Now that's something you won't have with a revolver, so that is certainly a pro. And I think the, these are more prone to limp wristing because of the gigantic slide reciprocating mass and everything coming back and the fact that they're made out of pot metal and melted beer cans and shit. But it still does work and I still, I mean under $100, I would recommend this if that's all you had to spend. Now keep in mind for $300-ish, you could get yourself into much better guns. Mm -hmm. You know, four or 500 even, way better. If you're looking to buy a gun that you're gonna keep the rest of your life, this is not it. Save it for something better. But if you need something right now, you know, it's better than a sharpened stick. All right, now I would argue that this is the first gun I've ever owned that I think I would rather have a sharpened stick. Like if somebody was breaking into my house, would I rather have this or a fucking spear? I would probably rather have a spear, honestly. Or a sword or something, or fists, I don't know. I wouldn't even know how to put it together, so right. I also would want that. 10 yards with this shit show, here we go. Oh. Hip though, I flinched like a bitch there. <laughs> Flinching is natural. Especially with this thing. Yeah, it does not This thing look... feels like, I, I felt less recoil on Desert Eagles than this shit. All right, come on baby. Boom, two hits in a row. Failure to open. I'm trying to do it kind of fast, like we did the pen gun, you know? Or the credit card gun. And the credit gun. card gun. Yep. Three hits. Ooh. It's really finicky. It's really hard to. You're doing great. Really hard to open. Like if you had to do this under stress, like jump out of a window. <laughs> I don't know. Just I, run. I don't know how you do this under stress. But you can make hits with it, clearly. Hmm. Strange. Strange and. Uh, Unusual. Yeah. So, first impressions of all three of these guns under $100. First up, the High Point. The High Point CF380. Uh, I said before, and I'll say it again, if you can get a reliable one with reliable magazines, they're not the worst gun. They're just not. They shoot all right, they shoot relatively quickly up close if you need them to. If seven, eight rounds of 380 is not great, but it ain't bad either. So, I mean, worst case scenario, you see one of these in a gun store, this is all you can afford. 
uh, you're taking a 50-50 shot because sometimes these work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they shoot three rounds and fall apart. Sometimes they shoot a thousand rounds and work forever, apparently, according to the comments. Um, so honestly, I have a couple hundred rounds for this one. I've got a thousand rounds for the C9, so that's where most of my experience lies, although that gun is about twice what this one is, the nine millimeter version. and it's effective for what it is. So as far as the high point CF380, I would argue that out of all the guns on the table for serious stuff, this is it. As I said again, just a minute ago, as far as ranch use, things like that, I would argue the Heritage is probably the right way to go. It's probably uh, the most accurate of all the guns. And if you're shooting at rabbits, squirrels, things like that, you're gonna need a high level of accuracy, higher than you would the, the, the high point. You know, If you wanna really know how to shoot, rabbits are hard to hit with 22, so. Uh, that is a good way to go uh, as far as ranch defense honestly plinkin 22 is going to be cheaper this is a more fun gun to shoot it's easier to load and i would consider it an ideal gun to learn marksmanship on because it's super cheap the ammo is super cheap and for that i like it i like this gun as well i think for what it is uh you're probably better off buying a slightly more expensive version with a longer barrel and the reason why i say that's the longer the barrel you have the less recoil you're going to have the less muzzle flip you're going to have the more accuracy you're going to have the more ballistic capability you're going to have but particularly with a, a a revolver or an open sight gun the longer barrel you have the longer sight radius you have and that does help a great deal uh, this has that very short uh, two to three inch barrel. I think it's a two inch barrel and that is difficult to wield effectively a distance and uh, the longer barrels just can be easier. But uh, when we got it going, we figured out there was a push rod. We didn't have to take it apart every time like an asshole. Sorry about that. It just is what it is. It worked really well. The hammer block is interesting. I don't know if I like that or need that on a revolver. Uh, I'm an old school guy, but that's fine. The grips are pretty decent. It looks like a damn decent gun and uh, I wish the front sight was not bent, but hey, it's easily fixed. I'll just hit it with a freaking hammer and bend it back. So, so far for under hundred dollars, that one's not bad either. If you see this in the gun store, run for your life. <laughs> Don't buy this thing. This is fun. It was fun, but it's a little scary. It's a little dangerous in my personal opinion, just because you're doing a lot of things in front of the muzzle with this gun. You're, you're, pl you're placing a round onto a manually operated firing pin. Okay, so if you like place that round and you do this bullshit, you see where I'm going with that? I don't like that. I think that it's a fun gun. I think they need to rethink the trigger mechanism. I just think this, this thing all around is not ideal. That being said, it is a nine millimeter cartridge and we were able to hit three times out of three at 10 yards, but I'll tell you the reason why I only shot three rounds is because it's annoying to load, it's annoying to shoot, and it's got a lot of recoil, and the ergonomics are right up there with the pen gun as far as piss poor. And the sights are bad, and everything about this gun is exactly what you would expect for $60. So you can't say that it's not, there's not like a warning label on it. The warning label is it's $60. <laughs> But uh, that being said, uh, it's not the quality of the gun. The gun seems like it's actually made relatively more quality or of more quality materials than these two guns. It's the break action operation and then the release of the trigger system that I really don't like. I would argue that the single shot is just fine. I forget what, I mean, what's that movie? Hard Target with uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's gonna date me a little bit. But in it, Lan Lance Hendrickson, I think that's his name, the Bishop from Aliens, he uses a single shot, uh, I think it's a 30-30 pistol I have always wanted. And because of this gun, I'm probably gonna buy that gun. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. I had too much coffee today, I was rambling like crazy.